Triple H did an interview with Logan Paul, and uh, it's actually several days ago. I think this was like last Wednesday or something like that. But Dave, what'd you make of this interview? Well, the only thing I really got, I mean, it, I mean, it was just not. Um, and there's really nothing like substantial that came out of it, other than the uh, the comment about how Vince McMahon took this tiny thing, the small thing that they were doing in bars, and took it worldwide. And I thought that was like. I mean, I never even heard that one before because um, I had I have I don't think that I have ever I know you have but I don't think I have ever been to a show in a bar in my life, and um, I had never even heard of pro wrestling in bars until the mid '80s, which is after Vince started. Although they were not Vince's shows, um, but he certainly did not take this small thing. You know, I mean, there are there are many parts of the country where uh, wrestling before Vince McMahon was more culturally popular than it was ever under Vince McMahon. Um, I mean, there's, there's, there's more places that's, that's not the case, but there were many places where that was the case. And it's, it's, but I mean, like, I mean, I had always heard the, the smoky arena story, which is the one that Vince would tell, which, is also completely false because that's all about smoking laws. I mean, the promoters, for the most part in in your in your major markets, uh, used the same buildings as Vince used, and the same buildings that the NBA teams used. Or they, I mean, there weren't as many NBA teams, and there weren't as many big buildings, you know, in those days. But they um, most of your bigger companies would use major arenas um, in the cities that they ran in. I mean, not all did, but, um, and even the ones who didn't, they, you know, they used, uh, you know, substantial B arenas, so to speak. And, you know, so, and I mean, the, you know, the wrestling business, it was a very different business back then, but it was, um, it was not small by any means. And it was, uh, you know, obviously, like, you know, quoting TV numbers from five years ago is completely misleading to today, um, let alone, you know, when you compare television ratings with television ratings from 40 years ago or 50 years ago when, you know, I mean, it, it, the world was just a different place and TV viewership was very different. And the reality is, is that um, there were companies that did phenomenal, phenomenal television ratings that didn't draw that many people. And there were companies that drew reasonably good television ratings that drew a ton of people. Um, you know, I mean, there, there, there wasn't really even a, a great correlation. There was some correlation, but there wasn't even a great correlation between ratings and, and, and uh, attendance and ratings and revenue because it was a live event business. It was not a television business at the time, but you needed the television. The role of the television was to um, expose the stars and promote the matches, and you made the money on the matches. So it was a very different business, and Vince changed. I mean, Vince. I, I, I mean, Vince changed the business, but also market forces changed the business too. Uh, but the idea that it was a small business, and you know that they weren't even playing in arenas and all that, it's just I don't even know why he. I don't know why he said that. Perhaps Vince resigning, he was contractually, uh, everyone was contractually obligated to uh, make that statement when they talked about his legacy. Um, he was the only one who, who made that statement. I mean, everybody, you know, a lot of people put Vince over, but I understand that too. You know, why you would. A lot of people made, you know, I mean, there's a lot of good and a lot of bad that you could say about Vince. I mean, and you've got to say both. I mean, he made, he, he, did set up a business that made a lot of people a lot of money. Um, he also, I mean, he changed the business, and and some of that was going to happen with or without Vince. I mean, with cable TV was going to change the business, and there were only going to be a certain number of companies. There may have only been it may have only been one or two, and it may have been somebody else if it wasn't Vince. Although he had the he had the big advantage. He had Hogan. He had Andre. He had Madison Square Garden. Um, so, I mean, he had a, you know, the New York market. He had a big, big advantage. But, I mean, if, if, um, if he was incompetent, uh, he could have squandered that. And, and he was not incompetent and he did nearly squander that. I mean, they were, they were not doing well in, uh, I mean, before WrestleMania, he gambled everything on the first WrestleMania and, 
you know, a week out, I mean, it was looking pretty bleak, but they had great walk-ups, and they did very well. And from that point on, I think after the first WrestleMania, that was really the turning point of the business. And, I mean, even from the start when he started touring, there were a lot of uh, territorial companies that were on their way down and not doing well, and Vince could go into those territories and provide so much of a better, glitzy, more glitzy product and do very, very well in those places, the places where... Uh, with the exception of the AWA, the places where you had strong territories, Vince had a lot higher, harder time. AWA being the exception because Hulk Hogan built the AWA um, to the level that it was, and Vince had Hulk Hogan. And Vince also had, you know, Bobby Heenan, Jesse Ventura, and, um, you know, Schultz, and a lot of the guys. He really uh, picked the AWA um, as far as bringing in talent. So he could go into the AWA with essentially, you know, the AWA, many of the AWA's biggest stars, so he could go in there and draw right away. You know, in other places, um, you know, like against Watts or against Jarrett, uh, against Fritz, you know, where they had, where they, where their local, the, the local version of wrestling was very, very popular. It took, it, it was much harder on Vince, and in many of those places he didn't draw, but, uh, you know, that's the, that's the wrestling war of the 80s, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, the, um, that was a weird one to me, you know, the uh, the idea that it was this bar business. I'm not exactly sure what, you know, I'm not sure what he was trying to say, but whatever. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.